What's up YouTube? Today we're going to show you how we fix a brake chamber on a semi. A little southern slang history lesson for you guys and also a little soapbox preaching about the NFL. Take a look. Y'all out there? Alright, let's get this thing moving. What's going on YouTube? This morning we had a driver call in and complain and he had a huge air leak on his truck. He said he only did it with the brakes was released. So as you can see, nothing's leaking. And the brakes not released, so you guys watch this. So that means we got a blown brake chamber. That sucks. So we're gonna show you guys what to do to fix that. All right guys, this is what we're gonna to use to swap the old leaky brake chamber out. And Bill's gonna talk about what we got. All right folks, uh, we've got a 3 8 impact with a 9 16 deep well socket on it medium-sized packer, 7-8 wrench, 3 quarter wrench, one of them fit all wrenches, thumb wrench, crest wrench. That's known as a Mississippi metric. That's right. Some good old vice grips. We got a drill with a deep well, sure enough deep well. That's not a drill. Socket. That's not a drill. An impact driver, a drill, whatever you want to call it. Them dankies call them drills. And this a, is a brushless 24 volt cobalt. We're gonna try this bitch out and see how it works. Whatever you wanna call it. And if the battery does decide to fail, always have a backup plan. Yeah, cause it could fail. Cause let me show you guys, I am not prepared today. We've got two dots. So we're gonna half charge batteries. We're gonna try it out. We're gonna see what happens. Let's go get dirty. All right guys, we'll come over here to revise and we'll put our brand new brake chamber in here. It's a long stroke. 30, 30. Look at that, how pretty that is right there, boy. Woo! Bill's gonna show you what we're finna do. All right, first thing you wanna do is put it in the vise, make sure the vise is as close to this housing right here as possible. There is a spring behind here, but as you can see, it's not that much of a spring. Everybody's scared to take these apart afraid to because of that spring actually the spring that will kill you is the one that's behind here this is a sealed clamp you can't even service this end of the chamber anymore thank god oh kim jong young were to recognize that you know they put the part that's gonna key right here behind this flat uh, that's right you need to pay attention to that oh uh, anyway everybody's scared to to do this but i'm not i've done many of them like this but anyway what that's why you put this in the vise is because when you undo this clamp, that spring will push this forward. That's why we're gonna show you guys the safe way to do this. All right. All right. Most brake chambers, when you buy them, they come with a cage bolt. Already hanging in the side of it. Just hanging out, waiting on you to pick them up. Let's stick this in here. When you feel it grab and you can't pull it back out, that's where it needs to be. You gotta stick it in and turn it about a quarter of a turn and it's locked. We're gonna see how this little 3 8 brushless cobalt does. I'm 
She got a little bit of balls too, don't she? Look yep, at that. Yep. As you can see how that pushed on that forward. That shows you right there that it is, you do have the tension off of this big spring. This pulls the main part, the main part of the cylinder back and takes the tension off of that spring. Then you loosen up your clamp. And you throw them in the floor. Like you just don't care. Remind me not to ever buy a Silver Eagle brand impact. Silver Eagle brand impact. Should have bought a Cobalt. Yeah, I know it. Or Snap Cobalt. on. Cobalt sounds like it worked pretty good today. I don't even have to come all the way off. Surprise. Once you got at least one bolt out and the other one loose. Use your pecker. Now, the problem with the one that we're replacing was actually this. That is called the diaphragm. And we ain't even got took apart yet. We know what it's gonna be. That's right. So and while we're here, stuff like this can go in a scrap iron pile if you don't need it. I would suggest that if this is rusty on the truck to go ahead and replace it, then you gotta cut the rod, measure and cut the rod, put your clevis on it and all that kind of garbage. Well, if you don't wanna put it in a scrap iron pile, you can always do something like this. Make something out of it. Make something out of it. Make good drivers too. Okay? Yep, yep. All right, guys. Well, that's all we got to do with this. So we gonna go over here and get to the truck. Guys, we're back over here at the old leaky brake chamber. And Bill's already got his his fighting position under there. And we gonna show you guys what we gonna do. If y'all notice, we took these big ass towers off here just so you know, see a little better. So that's how much we care about y'all. We'll go through all that extra work just so we can get a good video. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, we had to change tires. It sounded good though. All right, Bill. What well, are we doing? The first thing you wanna do is take the cage and bolt out, which is right here. chamber just like we did the other one. Jerk it all out there, huh? Well, this one is down towards the very end. Won't have to turn as far on this one. bottomed out. Now, you take a pair of vice grips on that rod on the back side of the chamber. You want to make sure you clamp it off. All right, now we're ready to remove our air line. Dirt sure did taste good. And yeah. I didn't even eat no breakfast this morning. This one's all covered in fifth wheel grease. This happens to be on the number two axle. Right under where the, all the grease decides to 
to drop to. Fold those airlines back out of your way. Put the Mississippi metric on there now. I guess if you live in Tennessee, it'd be a Tennessee metric maybe, or Arkansas would be an Arkansas metric. <clears throat> Anything north of the Mason-Dixon line, it's known as a thumb wrench or an adjustable wrench or a crescent wrench. Even though it ain't a crescent brand. But like down here in the south, I'm, I'm going to give y'all a quick lesson while Bill's taking them fittings out of there. Down here in the south, everything is a Coke. You know? Um, we say, go to McDonald's and get me a number one. What do you want to drink? I want a Coke. Make it a Dr. Pepper. Well, that fella didn't change his mind from a Coke to a Dr. Pepper. Everything in the South is a Coke. Look, you'll hear people, hey, uh, pick me up a Coke when you go in the store. What kind you want? I want a Pepsi. Give me a diet. Yeah, diet Pepsi's gonna watch my figure. Pick me up a Snickers bar. You know, that's what's surprising me. All these folks go to McDonald's and order them Big Mac and Quarter Pounders and Whoppers and whatever from Burger King. And then they're going to get a Diet, Diet Coke. Coke. Just don't make no sense. Man. So anyway, up north, when I, I, I got some family that lives in Chicago, you know, when I, I was a kid, I'd go up there, and uh, they call it a pop. A pop. I thought, man, that's weird. A pop's what you call your papa down here in the south. You know, everybody's got a pop, or a poppy, or something like that. Anyway, that's my... Southern history lesson for you folks that may live up above the north of, you know, north of the Mason-Dixon line. Everything in the south is a Coke. It don't matter. It could be a Sprite, Mellow Yellow, Mountain Dew. It don't matter. It's all a Coke. You just got to clarify what type of Coke you want. So, anyway, we'll get back to work now. I just thought y'all might want to know that in case you ever hear me and Bill talking on a video or something like that, and we're talking about Coke, and we're actually drinking a Dr. Pepper or a Mountain Dew or whatever. All right, now that we get those fittings out, get the back rod caged off, the front of it caged off, take our clamp off. I'd be giving Southern culture history lessons while working on a truck. But I, I guess I just did. But it's true. You ask anybody from the South, they all coax. Y'all know Bill had a green pecker? Yep, yep. There may not be a whole lot of folks know that. <clears throat> Y'all seen it, Bill's got a green pecker. That's one of them parts you can give the left shoulder treatment. Now, that piece of rubber right there is the whole reason for this whole repair. As it was leaking on this side. And I'm gonna say right there is where she's damaged. Let me see that thing up here and we'll look it over. Now that right there could be- Oh yeah, she's got a crank in it. Let me see, yeah buddy. The last thing down here I'll show you guys. See that? It's always, every time, if you guys will think about it, it's always the busted rubber that's gonna get you in trouble.
every time. All right, now that we've got this pulled back, or got the got the rubber off of it, uh, diaphragm, the diaphragm off of it, we can take a 7 16 socket, back a slack adjuster off, we can pull this rod further in. Uh, and then clamp it off. All right. Once again, we wasn't prepared, so I had to run over there and get Bill my 7 16th ricotta and a socket. So now we're ready to roll again. All right, guys, you saw me pushing on this a little while ago. Uh, anytime I take one of these off, I want to check and make sure for proper operation that the slack adjuster is turning, the S cam is turning freely, and nothing is binding up, nothing is froze up. If it is, now is a very good time to address the situation. An excellent time, right? An excellent time. No better time than the present. Get them to burn. Put that on the video. That's sort of like magic, you mash on that. Now, when you've got this all the way backed off, you can see there's a good distance between the vice grips and the brake chamber housing. You can take your vice grips off of it because the slack adjuster will hold it back. And we're ready to go on with the new chamber. There's a new rubber. There's a new chamber. There's a new chamber. And where's my new clamp? Did I bring it over here? Or did I leave it on the table? Yeah. Unprepared again. Man, Unprepared. it seems like a Monday. I'll be right back. All right. Now, we is prepared. I hope. Maybe. Well, make sure you always center your diaphragm. And when you put your chamber up here, You've got to hold it all still in one place and get the clamp. Sometimes it feels like you need about six hands to do this. And I'm sure there are some of them folks out there who have found different ways of doing this. This is the way I've always done it. There's that pretty flag again, fellas. You know, it's sad. I guess I'm on the soapbox today. You know, I done talked about the Cokes and all that. I think it's sad that them NFL players spend all this time and energy thinking about ways to protest and not standing up for that flag and the national anthem and all that, and they getting paid multi-million dollars. Them guys are role models. Role models. You know, if I own the NFL team, and this is just my opinions. I don't want to offend nobody because everybody's got their right to do and believe whatever they want to. But it is in my opinion. When they put that damn uniform on and they walk out of that tunnel, they're on the job. That's the way you look at it, Bill? That's the way I look at it. They're on the clock. That's what they're getting paid to do. And when they're in uniform, they should have to follow certain rules and do what they they supposed to do you know and, and if it wasn't for america and all the soldiers that died and 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 the troops that keep us safe they wouldn't be out there on that damn football field they'd be in some sweatshop that 40 yard dash wouldn't be a very important factor then anyway i'm gonna get off my soapbox we're gonna get back to truck working all right, you saw me running my finger around that, making sure that the rubber was where it needed to be all the way around. Get the clamp on. Set 
Snug that side down just a hair. While you're still holding it all in place. All right, usually what I like to do when I'm putting these on is I'll take a hammer. And go all the way around the clamp to make sure that it's seeking down against the brake chamber like it needs to be. Bill just likes playing with his picker. Yep, yep. You want to try to keep the pressure on these bolts as even as possible. I know it's kind of hard for you to see from where I'm at or from where you're at. But when I was hitting that with a hammer just now, I could see this clamp seating further up against it. Got your clamp good and tight, you can screw your fittings back in, put your air, air hoses back on. I won't bore you guys with the uh, <coughs> fittings going back in and the air line on. When we get all that done, we'll click her back on. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we got the lines back on. Everything's good and snugged up. And we went ahead and shot some air to our truck so the brakes are really released. And we're going to show you what else you got to do. All right. Like he said, we've got to make sure we got plenty of air pressure. The brakes are released. When you release your brakes, the air pressure pushes against the, that heavy duty spring. And you can just pretty much take this Cajun bolt right on back out of there. And when you take this cage bolt out, always make sure you stick it back in a little hole on the side and a little storage hole. Because if this truck breaks down on the side of the road, or as in a wreck, whatever the case may be, they will need this caging bolt to cage this brake chamber off. And I don't usually like to tighten these down too tight. I have been on the side of the road trying to take one of these loose and ended up having to uh, get a show enough piece of cheater pipe to get it broke loose. There we go. Now, we can proceed to adjusting the brakes out. And that's where we're going to use the little ratchet and socket I got over here while I go. Bill's going to talk to you about how to do it and how you know where you got to go and how you know where you got to stop. All right, on this tight slack adjuster, some of them are made different, but with this one, Put your ratchet in the tightening down mode. Always run the brake shoes all the way out against the drum, back it off half a turn. Check for travel on your slack adjuster which you want inch and a half to two inches on it, or an inch to two inches. I usually try to put about halfway in between. Uh, 
since we've got the tires off, I'm going to adjust them and then I will go back after we get the tires bolted up and recheck it to make sure everything is adjusted right and properly. Now, it's time to bolt the tires up, go back and recheck everything, and let it roll. And that's how we do a brake chamber repair. You guys have a great week. We'll catch you next time, like always. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up and subscribe down here below. Like I say, I hate to have to be on a soapbox today, but that just bothers me about the NFL players. And if I offended you, I do sincerely apologize. But they have the right to protest, and they want to talk about freedom of speech and all that. So I got the right to say what I think about it. Anyway, done for today. You guys have a great one. Catch you next time.